What if all lead turned into gold? Like the guy with the finger, Midas, the Midas touch. Not really the Midas touch, that was everything, but close enough. More like alchemy is kind of what I would have gone with, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess Midas when, he, when he's touching lead things. I mean, yeah, it still still works, but anyway. I decided to look at the, the economic ramifications of this, because I'm a huge nerd. So we are going to talk a little bit about a little bit about economic theory here. So I'm sorry, but hopefully it's kind of interesting. That sounds we'll see. fun. <laughs> I know. Well, no. So so real talk. I actually took a lot of information here from this paper called the Golden Dilemma, which is a 2013 paper by Claude Erb and Campbell Harvey for the National Bureau of Economic Research. Um, which is really just like, it's really <laughs> what that sounds like a comedy like a cr- comedy uh, crew. It, like it really Cobb, does. Earl and <laughs> yeah. And basically, it was just a paper on, like, a lot of the traditional ideas of, like, the economics of gold and debunking a lot of them, which was kind of fun. And it was, like, 50 pages long, and I wound up reading, like, probably 30 or so of it, which I was really surprised about. It kind of just Whoa. happened. I don't know. It was weirdly, like, part of it is that a lot of the paper was just them, like, trashing a lot of accepted theories on gold, which was kind of fun to read. Um, but I don't know. It was it was weirdly interesting. And so a lot of my stuff is just from that paper, but if not, I used like sources they use as a jumping off point. So I guess thanks to Claude Herb and Campbell Harvey on this. So I guess to start, how much gold is there now and what is it worth? So there's an organization called the World Gold Council, which is basically a like global gold lobbyist, effectively. They just like try to like develop the market for gold. That's what they do. And according to them, at the end of 2017, there were 190,040 metric tons of gold that have been mined, like, overall in history. Um, and gold can't really be destroyed, really. So all that gold is still around. Also, going forward, I'm just going to say ton instead of metric ton, because I always mean metric ton, and <laughs> it's just annoying to say it. So assume that. It's almost the same as a U.S. ton anyway. It's like yeah, it's really annoying. 0.9 metric tons to a U.S. ton, so whatever tons i always forget there's a difference there and i i think i think probably most of our listeners too would be like oh oh they're different huh i always forget <laughs> too and then i'm like is there a difference and i look it up and i'm like fuck these are so close why don't we just like condense <laughs> into solid. one i don't know whatever well you can say about the all of the u.s's measuring systems with this is the rest of all the world's measuring systems that's fair yeah yeah but tons is so close like yeah all the other ones are not close at all i guess like meter to yard is close and those are, I guess even yeah. yard, we don't really use like all that. I don't know. Right. It's not like the standard we use. We use feet. Exactly. Anyway, 190,000 metric tons. I did it again. Tons of, of gold. Um, as a fun visual aid, they point out that if you take all that gold and make it into one big cube, it would only be 21.4 meters, which is 70.2 feet per side, which actually isn't that big. That's like no, a little bit like, longer than a bowling lane. A bowling lane is like 63 feet. It's basically like a house on a plot, like a suburban house. Yeah. Just replace one suburb, some one house somewhere in a suburb with one gold cube. And that's all the cube, ever, so all that, the gold That's ever. all the gold that's mined or that's all the gold that is That like, is mined. It exists. That okay. is mined. <laughs> yeah. Um, as of the end of 2017. So next question is, where is all this gold? So, like, 48% of it is jewelry, like 90,000 tons, which is a lot. That's actually more than I expected. Um, which, I mean, I guess we've been using gold to make jewelry for a long time, so it kind of makes sense, but that's still a lot of jewelry. Yeah, you'd think it'd be, like, some other application that we hadn't thought of. Yeah, but no, it's just jewelry. That's, like, almost half of gold is jewelry. <laughs> um, like, 21% is private investment, so mostly, like, banks and stuff. 17-ish percent is what they call it official sector, which is, like, government's gold reserves. And then 14% is just other, which is like 26,000 tons of gold. What the fuck is all this gold? Where? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of gold, guys. Like, what else? Like, there's like stuff in electronics, I know. And, and like, but like, that can't make up 26,000 tons is a <laughs> lot of gold. I feel like you should have some more categories aside from just other there. Anyway. I know where, I know where some of it is. Maybe not 26,000 tons, but I know where some of it some. is. Some, Okay. So that's kind of the general breakdown, though. A lot of jewelry, decent amount of investment, and then some other shit we don't know about. Whatever. They did also estimate the amount of gold still available to be mined, to sort of follow up your question earlier, Chris. At the time, they estimated about 54,000 tons of gold still available. Um, I actually cross-referenced this with the United States Geological Survey's National Minerals Information Center report on gold, which had the same number. So feel pretty safe in that. So overall, 
above ground and below ground, we have roughly 244,000 tons of gold on planet Earth. The current price of gold as of today is just over $1,500 per ounce. So the mined gold in the, in the world is worth about $10 trillion U.S., um, including the, what hasn't been mined yet, about $13 trillion U.S. of gold. So a lot of gold, worth a lot. But how do we actually like track the effect that things have on the price of gold? So it's actually kind of complicated because of like the nature of gold as why people use it. Because it's mostly a luxury thing, right? It's either like people buying it as an investment. It doesn't usually have like a practical right. value. Exactly. So there actually is a theory, an economic theory called price elasticity, which is the idea that the price of something is affected by the demand or as the price of something increases or decreases, the demand of something will be affected. So an example from that paper I mentioned earlier, The Gold Dilemma, um, jewelry has a negative price elasticity. So if the price of gold goes up, the demand for jewelry goes down. This makes sense because the jewelry is more expensive. You know, that makes sense. They said it was about 5 to 10% decrease from a 10% increase in gold price, which, you know, that makes, makes sense. Interestingly, investment actually has a, a positive elasticity. So as the price goes up, people want to invest in gold more. Mm, that's which interesting. Which it tracked pretty much one-to-one. A 10% increase in price of gold leads to a 9.8% increase in investment demand for gold, which I thought was kind of interesting. I mean, it makes sense when you think about it. I was trying it. to think of, because you mentioned negative, I was trying to think of a, an example of positive. I can think of one, but that's that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. You know, people want to invest in things that they think are gaining value. So if the price goes up, they're like, oh. I think it's true, but like, wouldn't there just be a continuously increasing demand of investing then for gold? Like if it just keeps going so interestingly one of the things to talk about in this paper is that the price for gold has actually been increasing pretty sharply like compared to historical value of gold over the last like couple hundred years in a way that outstrips like inflation or anything there's no like it really is just sort of this feedback loop of people invest in gold so gold is worth more uh, also quick aside before i continue down that road um technology actually had basically no price elasticity so, like, regardless of the cost of gold, it had pretty much the same demand for technology, which I thought was cool. That, like, we apparently just use gold for what it's useful for in tech and nothing else. There's no, like, we're not gonna, we're not replacing it because it gets expensive or anything ever. Which I is mean, there's true. only so many solid gold iPhones you can make before someone's like, well, maybe this is kind of heavy and This bad. is true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was trying to figure out how to see how the price would be affected. It was really hard to find an example of a commodity increasing all at once then had like a big impact on a price because it just doesn't really happen to this extent. But what we can sort of use to approximate it is a stock split. So in investing, if a company wants to to basically reduce their share price without decreasing their value, they just split the stocks. So they'll just say, hey, for every stock of ours you have, you have two now. And they're worth half as much. It's a thing. It makes sense in context. Just roll with it. So... We're going to do that same sort of idea where we'll take the increase in amount of lead or amount of gold from changing lead to gold and then see what that would do to the price. So now we have to know how much lead there is. So there is an equivalent to the World Gold Council. It's called the International Lead and Zinc Study Group. The website is bad and all the info <laughs> is behind a paywall. So fuck them. It does not sound as cool. It is not anywhere near as cool. <laughs> yeah, it's the Lead Study Group versus the Gold Council. Right. <laughs> you can Which, just tell. You can ooze his fanciness, that Gold Council. It completely tracks what we think about, like, gold and lead, too. Like, of <laughs> course. And lead, lead doesn't even get its own. It's lead and zinc. Like, they can't... Lead doesn't deserve its own group. Come on. <laughs> so the website sucks and didn't have the information without me having, like, make an account or anything. So I just went back to the... U.S. Uh, geological Survey. Now, you survey. said paywall, and now you said make an account. So which one is it, Ben? How so, all right. really committed are you to this It asked for a username podcast. and password, and it implied from the page I looked at that there would be a membership with a, some sort of fee. <laughs> but I didn't go down that road because I was just didn't want to go down that road. <laughs> I didn't care that You don't much. want to start getting spam emails from the, the lead and zinc study group. <laughs> well, I don't. No. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, from from the U.S. Geological uh, Survey, that National Minerals Information Center, uh, I went back there and found their report on lead, and there were fewer hard numbers, but they did say the world lead resources total more than 1.81 billion tons. So if you remember, we said that there were 244,000 tons of gold, 
And if you add 1.81 billion to 244,000, you get about 1.81 billion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good math right there. I did the math, but the increase is like 740,000%. It's absurd. And using like that stock explain logic where we're going to split the price by how much it's, you know, the number of shares is increased by. It takes the price of gold from about $1,500 per ounce to about $0.21 cents per ounce, which, interestingly, is actually still worth more than lead currently is because lead is about $0.06 cents per ounce, which I thought was cool. <laughs> so you would actually gain value from having lead turn to gold. If <laughs> you're lead investments. Yeah, assuming it worked like a stock split, which I don't think it actually would, but... Under that logic, yes, it would. Yeah, lead, lead investment's great, but the stock, it's so hard to move. It really is. Um, that was a Because it's so joke. heavy, get that it? That was the joke, yeah. <laughs> so, sort of my last question was, does any country still back their currency with gold? Because, you know, we a lot of countries had a gold standard at one point where they had to back some portion of their money with gold just to, like, actually back up the value of the money. Really, no one does anymore. The last to really do it was Switzerland, but they stopped in May of 2000. Up to that point, they needed like 40% of the Swiss franc backed by gold. But at this point, no one requires it anymore. Most of the major governments are at like 4 to 5% of their current cir- circulation and gold supply. So it wouldn't actually have that much an effect like economically, which I was a little surprised about. The one thing I did see, so as of 2012... Lebanon had r- roughly 50% of their country's money supply in gold and also like crippling debt, but you know, it doesn't matter. But I really, really tried to see if this was still true. I actually went to the um, Banco de Liban, which is like the Lebanese National Bank, their website, and they do have like balance sheets and stuff you can access. And I actually was going through them and trying to figure out if it was still true. And I couldn't because I'm not a fucking accountant or anything. But this sounds like this question is like, the most research you've ever done on any question there were a lot of spreadsheets and i kind of fucking love spreadsheets i'm sorry i'm a huge (laughs) nerd i mentioned this at the start you also this is like also becoming a tagline because i think you mentioned like every other time you do you like start you preface your answer with i looked into blank because i'm a huge nerd and then you start your answer (laughs) i don't i don't know if it's clear but i'm a huge nerd i fucking love spreadsheets if you give me a problem where i can look at spreadsheets i will just go nuts i don't know why there's nothing wrong with me Anyway, overall point here, I guess, is that world economy, surprisingly pretty fine. Gold would obviously be a lot less valuable. I'm actually not sure. I actually was sort of just like theory crafting, trying to figure out what it would actually be worth. And I think it would basically just, the price of gold would be based on like the non-jewelry uses. Like it wouldn't be used for investment anymore, obviously, because there's just too much of it. So it'd really just be like tech and whatnot uses. So it would probably be like roughly the same price as lead or another mineral like that because it's kind of just the same as one of them now. I don't know. I don't know if we'd still want gold jewelry. Like I guess we probably would, but it would be cheaper. I don't know. I mean, it'll be worth its weight in gold. That was a clip from Absurd Hypotheticals, the podcast where we answer dumb hypothetical questions. For the full episode, click on the link in the description.